weren't close, so when I got word that she died, I debated going back to school. In fact, that long of a trip, I had just come home from North Carolina, um, and it was probably the best trip I've ever made. I was able to find out that 16 years ago, when my grandmother was 81 years old, she accepted Christ as a Savior. Yeah, amen. And, uh, to me, that tells me, number one, it tells me it's not too late for my dad, who's 74, who doesn't know Christ. Um, and it, it got me back into a relationship with some family that I wish I'd stayed in touch with over the years. I have a, a cousin who's a Baptist preacher, and it's just an awesome, um, we just had an awesome time. And it, the, the biggest praise was that I know where my grandmother is today. Amen. Amen. <laughs> I'll show it to you later. Uh, it's, it's a choir thing. Joan's choir needs to be in on the joke. That's my plug for the choir, right, Bobby Joe? All right, page 43. We are going to sing We're Marching Design. We'll sing the first, the second, and the fourth verse. Page 43. Let's all sing it.
Spirit is here. Amen. <laughs> we have the impression sometimes that God owes us yeah. salvation. Mm -hmm. Sometimes people give the impression that God is such a loving God, he would never let anybody go to hell. But it's the grace of God yeah. that provides salvation for us. I can imagine God the Father and God the Son, God the Spirit, discussing how we're going to do this. And God the Father said, Son, you need to go down and yeah. die on the cross. What if Jesus had said, no way? <laughs> but he did. Yeah. He did. Had it not been for the fact that he came mm -hmm. and died on purpose and rose from the dead, we would be done. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. I bring to all of us children tonight, there are people who really believe, had it not been for Calvary, you'd have been dead a long time ago. Yeah. I can hear my dad in his prayer. To my wife, who 
be my son? That's crazy. And he'll either kill somebody or they'll kill him. It would have been so easy. The places where I was, what I was involved in out on the highways, somebody get killed. God's so good. Amen. And I can go home because this dead man's curve right down here. I can go home and go around curves where I know of a friend I grew up with that's killed in that curve. That could have been you. And you see the same thing in your life. God's been so good to us. Amen. Mark chapter 15. Notice the beginning. Uh, with verse 20. I've got to get out of the book of Acts. down through verse 25. I'm thinking I'm going to cut it out of my Bible. <laughs> verse 12. And Pilate answered and said, uh, said again unto them, What will ye that I shall do unto him whom ye call the king of the Jews? They cried out again, Crucify then Pilate said unto them, Why, what evil have he done? They cried out more exceedingly, Crucify him. And so Pilate, willing to content the people, released Barabbas unto them and delivered Jesus when he had scourged him. Watch that word right there. Put it with underscore to be crucified. And the soldiers led him away into the hall called Praetorium. And they called together the whole band. And they clothed him with purple, clad in a crown of thorns, and put it about his head. And began to salute him, Hail, King of the Jews. And they, watch this word, smote him on the head with a reed. And watch this word. And did spit upon him. You get the Lord that. And bowed their knees, worshiped him. And when they had mocked him, they took off the pur purple from him and put his own clothes on him and led him out to crucify him. And they compelled one Simon the Cyrenian, who passed by, coming out of the country. Followed the father of Alexander and Rufus to bear his cross. And they bring him unto the place called God, which is, being interpreted, the place of a skull. And they gave him to drink wine mingled with myrrh, but he received it not. And when they had crucified him, they parted his garments, casting lots upon them, what every man should take. And it was the third hour, and they crucified him. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for the message and song that we have just heard. Thank you for this portion of Scripture that we have just read. And now we pray for the blessed Holy Spirit of God to have control of each heart in this auditorium. Lord, we need spirit-filled hearing, and we need spirit-filled preaching. Give us tonight what you have for us. Bless us in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, you may be seated. Obviously, you see from the scriptures tonight, the crucified Christ. The crucified Christ. Why was Christ crucified? He was crucified because it was essential. Because it was 
necessary in order for us to have Jesus Christ as our Savior today, yeah. who wasn't born the same way you and I were born, but was born without sin, right. so he could be the Redeemer and die on the old rugged cross yeah. for your sin and mine. The Bible refers to Jesus' type of a scapegoat. He was your scapegoat and my scapegoat. We don't have time to get into that tonight. Numbers chapter 21, verses 8 and 9. And then, of course, in the Gospel of John, chapter 3, verses 14 through 16, we see him there as the Lamb of God. And tonight, as we think about, he was not a Lamb, because he's not a way. He was the Lamb and the only one who could have died of vicarious death in your place, in my place, on an old rugged cross. Now, we were singing a little while ago about him getting sweeter every day. I believe, I believe that is a tremendous truth. A child of God who will live for God and serve God. I didn't say that selfie on the throne of the heart and Jesus there every once in a while. I'm talking about do what we do heartily as of the Lord and not to the praise of man. And uh, if we will serve him every day, regardless of what life confronts us with, I believe it will get sweeter as the days go by with the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, when you and I hear anything about the cross, we hear that word Calvary. It ought to cause a goosebump, really. When we think about the significance of it, when we think about the place of the skull, Calvary, where Jesus was crucified for your sin, my sin, uh, it's the key to it all. It's the center, it's the hub of it all as far as this life is concerned. It, geographically, geographically speaking, it's the center of the world. Theologically speaking, it's the center of the Bible as such. And we could go on and on on that subject as such. But in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 2, Paul says, I'm determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and him crucified. Amen. Right. I believe and you believe tonight, listen to me, if we are determined, and you, it's going to take some determination, in order for this to be reality in our life. I'm determined not to know anything about anything other than Jesus and him crucified. Right. He should be not a part of your life and a part of my life, but all of our life. Now, if I listen to every, every carefully, if we are thinking Christ, talking Christ, and walking Christ, it's going to all be Christ, what our lives manifest, and what our lives consist of. Believe it, and you believe that tonight. Napoleon, he said, regarding uh, the British Isles, he made the remark, you've heard this before. Had it not been for that one pointed toward the mark, a map rather, and said it had not been for that one red spot, one red spot, the world would have been torn. Tonight, the only thing that's kept this world from being conquered, there's a red spot, mm -hmm. which is the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Where would we be tonight without the blood? Mm -hmm. It's so vital that you and I don't let Satan get us away from how precious the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ is. Here we go. Peter says that the blood of the cross, the blood of Christ, is much more precious than silver or gold. Amen. If that is reality, and it is, it's biblical, it ought to be kept in the right perspective as far as your life and my life. Regardless of what comes, parts in my drive, regardless of what life consists of, regardless of what this one is or that one is or who it is, so, Christ is first and the one who stands out above all as far as life is concerned. Now, first of all, tonight, 
Now I'm trying not to be long. The crucifixion of Christ was shameful. You've seen that from reading the Bible tonight. It was an easy road to Calvary. It was an easy road on Calvary. It wasn't an easy road after Calvary. But Jesus was willing to persevere. Jesus was willing to be the epitome for you and for me when it comes to being faithful to someone or something. He was faithful. Now, in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2, the Bible reminds us there, as far as God's will and, and the race that the Lord has for us in life, how important it is that we keep our eyes on who? Jesus. Jesus. Looking unto Jesus, the one who initiated it, the one who went at the climax of it, and the one who is everything in between, uh, as we know. Now, the Lord Jesus Christ was crucified on a tree. You and I cannot even really imagine how horrific it was for Jesus to die on an old rugged cross for you and for me. The Bible teaches us in Galatians chapter 3, verse 13, about that truth, that truth. You know, when you think about someone going to the election chair, someone going to uh, a firing range or whatever, any method as such, and uh, death, taking the life of someone, putting someone out, you say, nothing compares with that old rugged cross and our precious Savior. He was crucified on that tree. He was crucified, and Mark chapter 15 reminds us in verses 18 through 20 of how he was treated. He wasn't just put on a tree and killed. But the time he spent there and what he faced during that time, we see here in the Word of God. The Bible says he was smoked. That's pretty powerful. He was smoked. He took your women and took my women. Now, not only was he smoked, can you imagine? Just kind of picture yourself, or picture anyone, anyone. Listen, don't make light of the death of Christ. Don't make light of the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Don't make light of when you come to the Lord's table and you partake of that cup that we've been uh, taught to, to respect and honor. Don't, don't take it light when you think about the blood of the Lord Jesus. There he was. He was smoked. And then, if someone came right now and spit in your face, you think about how that just wouldn't go well. There he is, nailed to that old rugged cross. Aren't you grateful tonight? Those nails didn't keep him there. But the love that he had for you and me. Kept us, kept him there. Amen. That love ought to keep us where we need to be kept in our lives as we reflect upon it. But they spit upon it. They spit upon it. And I'm sure when it comes to being scourged, you wouldn't get a lot of volunteers for it. To be lashed, to be beaten with cabinet tables, to be beaten the way that Jesus was beaten. Taking the beating for someone else, for you and for me. My, what a Savior we have tonight. Now, we see how the Lord Jesus is crucified and others forsaking him at the same time. Can you imagine what are you old, you might say? The spokesman for the group, Peter. I don't know him. I have anything to do with him. And deny the Lord Jesus.
Jesus Christ. Matthew chapter 26. He denied it. Judas. Can you imagine when he went and kissed the Lord Jesus Christ for a little bit of silver? 30 pieces of silver. And he kissed him and betrayed him into the hands of those who would take him to that cross to shed his precious blood for our sins. It ought to get sweeter every time you and I sing. No one ever cared for me. I said for these years, from time to time, if Miss Joyce had saved me, she saved me before I married. And she could have saved me, she would have spent five years with me, long she had seen, and living a life. Nothing to be proud of. Jesus. What a savior. Judas sold him. You say, well, that doesn't make sense. It's amazing. I mean, people out here in this world, what they sell Jesus for. Right. Mm -hmm. It's amazing how many out here today in churches, people around Christ, been around Christ, mm -hmm. like Peter, but deny him. Deny Deny it by the places they go. Deny it by the way they look. Deny it by the things that they participate in. Listen, we are to be holy as he is holy. We are not to represent Christ when we are in church, although we are. That's not the end of it. We're to represent him in every word we speak, in every action we perform. That's why Psalm 19, verse 14, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. You say, nobody can do that. Yes, someone can do that. There's someone living in you and living in me right now who can do it if we keep our lives yielded to him as such. The disciples, can you think about them? Here's it. Those that are stupid, and they all turned their faces on them. Matthew 27, verse 46. Now listen to me. You get anything else, get this. I love it. When you and I think about Calvary, and the death that Christ died for us. The price of prices that he paid for you and for me. It ought to make salvation easy for a lost sinner. To realize Jesus loved me enough to pay such a price. As the Bible teaches us, pouring out his soul on the dead. His all. Giving is all. Not his time is all. Are you there? It ought to make salvation much easier. Well, I tell you, I've heard this. Anybody that's tried to win souls heard it. I know this is what I need. I will do. But I just don't think now's the time. I said, well, that's your thing. But God's thinking it's not that because he said now is the time. You don't know you'll have another breath, another day. So. And here's the good. Goes the bad. I know that this is what I ought to do. I don't have any question about that. But I have lived my life, and now come to the place I want to be able to get out here and do some of the things that I've always wanted to do. Now, I think for you not get right with the Lord. You know what we'll want to do? Whatever the will of God is for our lives. Yeah. yeah. I've been one of the most miserable people in this world, the carnal Christian. You say, who is the carnal Christian? One who lives with self on the cross. It's all I, my, me. If it's my husband, if it's my wife, if it's my child. My son, my daughter, or whoever it is, my neighbor, I'm hers. Jesus said, if any man wants to be a little Jesus, 
He can't feel no cheeks. If he doesn't get rid of himself. Then mm -hmm. nine steps before he can take up the cross and follow me as Christ. Now, it makes salvation. It should make it easy to get saved, I think. And then the next thing is, are you ready? Isn't it a pitiful thing for someone to actually beg to do something in the name of the Lord? That old rugged cross and just a little understanding of it ought to make it easy for us to get out here and what can I do for Jesus? Lord, what is it that you would have me to do? Someone can be in this Christian service, but they're not in it for the Lord, they're in it for themselves. Mm. Far too much of that. Yeah. What happened to so and so? He used to be there, but he's not there anymore. Self. Jesus didn't do that. The Holy Ghost didn't get confused, did he? No. And said, there's the road to go, there's the path to take, there's the thing to do. And you end up backsliding on God and getting out of the will of God. Are you there? Singing ought to be easier for us. It will be easier for us. If we will think about the cross and what Jesus did for you and for me. Thank God for what he said. Don't you? Are you ready? You don't want to depart here. If we will get wrapped up in the cross, that's to get wrapped up in Jesus. And if we live the Christ life, we're more concerned about how we look, who we are, what we do, in the eyes of Jesus, then we are in the eyes of a professing Christian that's just as worthy as any carnal Christian can be. Are you with me? Well, I don't believe this and I don't believe that. I believe you ought to look like a Christian. Amen. Yeah. You ought to talk like a Christian. Yeah. Well, I love him. Like a Christian. As such. The old rugged cross. I'll cling to the old rugged yeah. cross. And one day exchange it for a crown. Yeah. That'll be far beyond the crown. Yeah. The story yeah. that I talked about this morning. You know, we're living in a time today. The average Christian. You mentioned something about living a separated life. Yeah. Yeah. Amen? Uh -oh. Uh -oh. That's not for me. <coughs> Our problem is not being separated from this world. Our problem is loving Jesus rather than loving self. Yeah. Now, the next thing. First of all, it was a shameful death. Shame for them. You know about Jesus' clothes and all that, and we'll move on. But Jesus died for them. The second thing is the crucifixion was substitutionary. Yeah. That's what that word about Caris is all about. He took your place yeah. and he took my place. The Bible says the just for the unjust. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 18. For Christ also has suffered once for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh. I'm thankful there's not a figure there. But quickened by the Spirit. Amen. Aren't you glad you got on the cross? Aren't you glad tonight Jesus is not on an old rugged cross? He's not in a bar too. He is risen. Yeah. Oh, this ought to be a blessed week in all of our lives. Yeah. Thinking about day by day, Jesus headed that, to that old rugged cross. Coming up out of that grave. Yes, sir. He has risen. Now, he was the sinless son of God. 
He was as sinless for the sinful or the sinner as such. Colossians, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 12. For he hath made him to be sin for us. Are you ready? Who knew no sin. Knew no sin. That we might be made the righteousness of God in Christ. He was the guilt that came for you and for me. The guilt. The guilt. Now, tonight, thank God, there is a family. There is that family. The blood of Christ. I thank God for that hymn that we sing about. The family is such. Where, oh, You go out here, you know, you have an operation or something else, you know, and the doctor does the best he can, but how many times have you said, I got all I could, there's still a little spot that's left there. Aren't you glad? Mm -hmm. No, say again, you know, you let yourself get in the Lord's washing machine, you don't have to go into one side. <laughs> and you come out. Now, Isaiah chapter 1, verse 18. I quoted it this morning, I think, and we all quoted it often. Are you, are you there? Washed in the blood, saved by the grace of God. Gone through that thing and come out. I love this. And not, I want to just say, all the stains are gone. I think it's a word that, go, that fits. So, before the stains be gone, listen. Guilty stains. Amen? Thank God when we get washed in the blood, redeemed by the blood, the Lord takes that guilt away. I said over the years, I still believe the Spirit of God, when we have confessed sin, repented of sin, got sin washed away, the stain is gone. Any bringing up something is dirty clothing, we might say, and have said, you know, in a person's life, bringing up bad things before us, that's not the Lord doing that. No. Better watch that other stuff. Amen. Watch that other stuff. It'll be worth it when you do that. Come now, he says, and let us reason together. You ever had your parents sit you down and say, Young man, I just want you to sit down, child. I will try to reason with you. Young lady, I want you to sit here. I just want to try to reason with you. That's, that's the Lord. He said, come, let us reason together. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. Isn't that wonderful? Amen. True. True. Now, The next thing, and I'm done. The crucifixion, as I said, it was very shameful. You and I can't even begin to comprehend or imagine what it would have been like for Jesus on that cross between those two thieves. It was substitution then. He didn't die for himself. He didn't die for anything he had done. He died for sinners. Hey. Like you and me. And then the last thing is the crucifixion or salvation. Amen. Salvation. Now, it's because of the old rugged cross and the shed blood of Christ, first of all, by which we have been reconciled. That's a good word. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 16. I'm going to flip there right quick. And that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross, having slain the enemy there by. Separated from sin. John, to that Oregon cross, and the righteousness. Thank God tonight 
You've been wrong and you're righteous. Aren't you grateful when you get to heaven? It will be, look what I have accomplished. Look what I have done. This is all Jesus that I have in this world. It's all him. None of my righteousness made it possible for me to enter the door or to enter heaven. It was I had on the road. Remember one that had no road? He can't get there without salvation. We've been reconciled with his God. Isn't it a sweet time when he was here talking about our new covenant? Having all sorts of problems, but reconciled to this. And renewed. not going back to the cross. Some people, every time they sin, you know, they put Jesus back on the cross. Thank God we know that we have the Bible. I'm alive forevermore. Aren't you glad he's alive for you? Amen. And you'll never, never die again. Has the keys to hell. Think. Well, 
Thank God tonight. You and I have the gospel because of the crucifixion of the Lord Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 13 and 14. I don't get time to read them, but thank God tonight. We know this is true. And we know what follows those verses. And what gets so good, you know, if he didn't die, if he is not risen, your faith and my faith tonight is in vain. That's the beginning of 1 Corinthians chapter 15. And you get those 19 verses of negative after negative. What if? What if? But there's no if. And verse 20 clarifies it all. But now is Christ risen. There's a point. From the dead. And become the first fruits of them that slept. And you might have a question. Well, there were folks that were raised from the dead, you know, before this. How did he get first fruits? Jesus was the first one that came from that grave who had never died. Amen. You can go to others in the Bible, and I don't take time to point it out. They were raised, but they died again. He said, I'm alive. No more dying, they slept. I'm going to share this with you in closing. One of my favorite hymns is this. Blessed, the Redeemer. Of Calvary's mountain. One dreadful morn, won't Christ, my Savior, weary and worn. Facing for sinners, death on the cross, that he might save them from the endless loss. Blessed Redeemer, precious Redeemer, seen thou, I see him on Calvary's tree. Wounded, bleeding, Dying for me. Oh, hell. Everything is about to be Let's pray. Lord, I pray that you take your word tonight and use it to strengthen the faith of each of us, to remind us. Such a wonderful love that you've had to follow. To remind us that you will always be present with us, living in us, through the precious Holy Spirit who dwells in us. Lord, I pray tonight that you help us. As we enter a week that needs to get the attention very much so of us as Christians, but the world needs to be reminded of what took place during the week before us. Lord, help us to get up in the morning and spiritually speaking, get us a palm branch. And get ready to get out here and praise you, thank you, bless you during this week for what you've done for us. Thank you for victory tonight. In Jesus' name.